this episode of Motive Garage presented by Spares Box, we conduct the first of our inlet manifold tests by comparing the factory and Nismo inlet manifolds for RB26. One of the things I love to do most on our channel is test products properly before and after in as much of a controlled environment as possible to give you guys real world results. Not just a vlogger style, this works great and off we go. Now one of the problems that we have is when a sponsor gives you a product to test, obviously there's a lot of work involved to do in return for that product, it's very difficult to get them to give you that product if they know that five other companies are giving you a product as well. It's a political minefield to negotiate because essentially there's going to be a winner, there's going to be a loser, there's going to be things in the middle and they might not all agree. So that's why you often find that we will test something from factory to something that's been provided by a sponsor. All of our data and all our testing is exactly how we want to do it. However, it is just the one part versus stock. And that's just simply due to the fact that we can't afford to go and buy five different turbos or buy five different of whatever. But one test I've wanted to do for a long time is inlet manifold tests on a GDR. So for this, I've gone out spent thousands of dollars out of my own pocket to buy some aftermarket inlet manifolds that we can test with no political pressure whatsoever. And the very first one that we're going to test is the Nismo RB26 inlet manifold. I've often said for a very long time that this inlet manifold was designed for 500 horsepower. It would go, went in the GT500 cars, it's been in the Z-Tune. So my attitude always was, if it's designed for cars with 500 horsepower, why would you put it in something with a thousand horsepower? But I've never really seen one tested properly back to back. So after 15 years of wondering, I'm finally going to test a Nismo inlet manifold on our GTR. And the best thing is, on 22 pounder boost with the G35,050, the car is still quite responsive, but it makes decent grunt. So we kind of get to test the power side of it, the response side of it, and obviously we can look at other things like, does it change the air fuel ratio in the back cylinder? Is it more efficient, etc. Does it change the torque characteristics of the car? Now before we get it on and test it, we're going to have a bit of a look over the differences between a factory inlet manifold and a Nismo inlet manifold. The first thing you notice between the standard and the Nismo is that the Nismo looks like it's physically bigger, i.e. has more volume, and we'll test that accurately very shortly. But if you have a look from the top, that's where they're very different. They're a lot thicker on the Nismo. So the factory one, you're talking 85 millimetres in thickness through most of it, and down the back tapers down to sort of 65. The Nismo, 105, and even all the way at the back, still 95 to 100 millimetres in terms of thickness. So it's a lot thicker, which leads us to believe it has more volume. But one of the big differences you see on the outside is the area around cylinder number six. A lot of people know that when you're tuning a GTR that cylinder number six will run different to the rest of them. Because it's at the back for starters, but secondly, have a look at this. The number five and number six basically join into the plenum in roughly the same spot. So rather than have this same sort of gap between the runners, there's not a lot of gap here where they join, but if you look at the Nismo one, you can see that that sixth runner has its own bell mouth and is separated away with good distance from cylinder number five, and the area of the plenum around number six is quite a fair bit bigger. So that would lead you to believe that air can get into cylinder six a lot better in the Nismo inlet as what it can in the factory inlet, which is something people have been saying for a long time. But the outside is one thing. Let's have a look on the inside. Inside the factory RB26 inlet manifold, it's obviously it's cast, but they haven't machined the runners on the inside. So you have this sort of this lump on one corner and a lump on the other corner, and it's quite rough inside the runner. But basically the casting marks haven't been machined back. If you look at the Nismo inlet, perfectly smooth. So even though cast, they've actually machined out the inside of this so it's perfectly smooth and you don't have the lumps and bumps that you do on the factory one. So you have a smoother inlet uh, runner into obviously the six throttle system and into the head. So straight away you should have smoother airflow inside there and no restriction with any bumps. If you're looking through the front, you see another big difference. The cast factory inlet, it has, I guess, a smooth mold into the runner but it's not a bell mouth. And as we know, if you're gonna suck air into a tube, a bell mouth is more efficient due to the way the air flows over the edge. It's still smooth inside, but there's a little bumps and undulations and stuff in there to make it not as perfectly smooth. And it doesn't got, hasn't got bell mouth. But when you look at the Nismo, 
even though they're cast, it has bell mouths cast into it on the inside. So when you look inside, six perfectly formed bell mouths. So overall, you, I guess you've got better spacing on the runners, you've got bell mouths on the runners, you've got smoother runners. And here's another little thing that I noticed when I got out the, uh, the ruler, is if you have a look at the length of the runner, the factory one from sort of the point at which it opens up is you know, 65 millimetres. But you get down to this last one, and it's like 90 millimetres from the edge of the head to where it joins into the plenum. This one is 55, 60, 60, 63, 65. So the inlet runner length is actually different on each one. If you go over to the Nismo one and you look at from here to their bell mouth, you're talking 70, 70, 70, 70, probably 66. And then that last one is back to 70 again. So the consistency of the length between the runners is now the same length and generally a little bit longer. So longer runners are usually for better torque, but it's not that different in terms of how long it is. So a longer runner, the runners are the same length on each one, uh, the spacing is better, it's smoother, and you've got more volume at the back. So just looking at the design, the Nismo one is a hell of a lot better design than the factory one. So physically, it looks like it's bigger volume, but the only way to find out the difference in volume is to measure it. So we're gonna seal it all up, fill it up with water, and measure the actual volume of each inlet manifold so we compare it. So after a simple measurement with water, 3.5 litres is the volume of the factory inlet versus 4.3 litres on the Nismo inlet. So 23% more volume overall between the two. Now if this volume was after a single throttle body, there would be a lot to talk about in how that affects power, torque, etc. But because this is all pre-throttle body, essentially this is just like having a larger intercooler pipe. So in terms of volume to fill up overall, like as you get off the throttle and back on the throttle, etc., it's probably gonna be pretty inconsequential. However, the extra volume of this inlet, what we're hoping it does is give better distribution of air to the back cylinders. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for better distribution of air, more even distribution between all the cylinders, which hopefully means if number six picks up a little bit of power, it means, well, the overall power will go up as well. Uh, we're also looking for results based on how long the runners are, the, how even the length of the runners is, and obviously the other thing we're looking at is how smooth the flow is. Is there any restriction in this factory one? We're about to find out. There's plenty of people out there that preach that you don't need to change the factory inlet at all, even at sort of 1,000, 11, 1,200 horsepower. And it is true. I've seen 1,000 kilowatts on the factory plenum. Probably poured it out a little. And it can do it, but you've got to remember, boost is forcing air into the engine. It's forcing its way in. So the only real thing that you have to worry about is it can get in there smoothly. Is there any restrictions on the way in? Maybe, but the more restriction there is just means the harder the turbo has to work. It doesn't mean it can't make the power. So what we're looking at is, will power increase or decrease overall? Um, will the same power have different boosts? So how efficient is the engine? Uh, will torque change? Will there be more bottom end, more top end, more mid range? These are all the things we're looking at. Not just the power level, how easy it makes the power and where it makes the power. So let's get the Nismo inlet onto our GDR and test it out. Nismo recommends the inlet is installed out of the car. And for good reason. Even an experienced GTR mechanic will need a whole day or more to install it in the car having to remove the brake booster and master cylinder before being able to fit the inlet.
Well, I've been waiting a very long time to get the results from this test. In fact, I bought that Nismo Inlet, I think 18 months ago. So um, I've been waiting a long time. And first up, I'm gonna say this, it works, makes more power. But here's the thing, it does some of the things Nismo said it would do, and some of the things it did, it said they, it wouldn't do. So it's a little bit of a weird result compared to what they said. Basically, Nismo said, expect power increases between 4,600 and 7,600 RPM. Well, we got power increases below 4,600 and above 7,600, and that section they said you'd have more power, we had no change. Now, before you argue about what it's designed to do, the inlet manifold does not know what engine it's attached to, what turbos are on it, it has no idea. All it knows is that it has air going through it. So if you try to say to yourself, oh, it would be different if you had low mounts or it would be different if you had pump fuel, it, no, no, none of that matters. If it works on this, it works on everything below this, if that makes sense, because it doesn't know what's attached to it, it just knows it has air going through it. So Con had to put more fuel in down low, so it's obviously more efficient off boost at part throttle position. And who knows, we could pick up some drivability down there. But where we did pick up power was up top. Um, and if you have a look at the boost level here, it actually has half a pound of less boost, but makes 10 kilowatts more, which tells you that the engine is, well, more efficient. So it's making more power on slightly less boost. So here is our second lot of comparison of stock versus Nismo Inlet. 601 kilowatts versus 586. So 15 kilowatts difference uh, between these two dynographs. If you have a look at the boost levels into the engine, 21.8, 21.5. 15 kilowatts extra with the Nismo Inlet. Now this one is actually making more power everywhere after from where the boost has equalized. Now, this is what you need to know about dynos and the way boost works. If you go right down to the start of the run, it actually starts on a higher boost level because when you load the car up and press the space bar to start the ramp, if you're on a higher boost level to begin with, it can make it look like it's come on boost earlier. It hasn't, it's just moved the boost curve over. So we kind of ignore that first bit because the old run just got bought on a little bit earlier. So you can't really compare that exactly. You've got to get up here where torque is starting to match back up. So really, you can see from here onwards, there is more power everywhere on the Nismo Inlet. So in summary, what do I think of the Nismo Inlet, Plenum, Collector, whatever you want to call it? I think it works. Um, and for it works for the reasons I guess I thought it would, analyzing it, it has larger capacity, the, the runners are an equal length, they've got better designed bell mouth on there and they're a smoother path. So it made the engine more efficient, was able to flow more power up top. This goes against what Nismo said it would do, I guess, but the result is the result. So overall, more efficient, makes more power because it can flow better, um, and it has a much more even distribution of air to each cylinder. And in the case of a circuit car or something you want to tune a little bit harder, that's obviously a good thing. So the whole distribution of air that Nismo promised, fact. Uh, changing the tune on number six, myth. Making more mid-range, I'm going with half myth, half fact, because if you've got laggy twins and a 2.6, it'll probably, that bottom end stuff we had might look like mid-range, but the whole it makes power in the mid-range, I think really is a myth. In fact, it's the opposite, it makes more top end power. Is it worth the money? GDR parts aren't really cheap anymore, are they? So um, yeah, look, it didn't go backwards, right? But is it worth it if all you care about is grunt? Probably not, but if you've got a circuit car, you want to replace it, you want even fuel and air distribution, and you don't mind a couple of extra kilowatts, yeah, sure, okay, it works. There you go, internet. One of the biggest arguments I've ever seen about inlet manifolds, for me, is now settled, but not for the reasons I originally thought. So the biggest question you guys have, and to be honest, that I have, now that we've tuned the car with the Nismo collector on it is, does it drive any better? It's all well and good to see changes on the dyno at full throttle, but we did see Con making a lot of adjustments to the tune, off boost, light throttle positions, and in the transient sections of the map as it comes on to boost. So if he's had to put more fuel in, and often quite a lot more than 10%, we should be able to feel that with the way it drives. So let's go for a little drive. Wondering what power on right now, that's 
that's on level three out of four, so that's 20 pound, probably 540 kilowatts, 550, so it's not full power. But as you can see, it is just super drivable. You know, 2,000 RPM in second. You can drive it in that 2,500 to 4,000 RPM range so easily, uh, as good as any factory GDR. So um, once again, the parts combo we've chosen and the tuning from CRD means we have an epic GTR. This thing is just so drivable. Well, I don't have any, I guess, data to show you for that drivability section of the map out on the street like this, but as someone that has driven a lot of GDRs and obviously knows my own car very well, I will say this, that the improvement in drivability down low from the Nismo Collector is instantly obvious in this car. I mean, it's not worth, you know, stupid amounts of horsepower, but I can notice the difference. And if you can notice it, then there's a significant change. I guess the best way to describe the car is it's a little bit livelier down low. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely an improvement in that sort of 2,000 to 4,000 RPM range as it's coming on to boost and off boost is improved with this car. The drivability is oh, sick. So the part throttle and sort of as you're coming on. Well, in summary, the Nismo Collector works, and it works very well. In fact, much better than I ever anticipated. Because I'm going to be honest, I spent the last 15 years pretty dubious of whether they did a whole lot. And the reason for that is, well, a few things. Firstly, I'd never seen anyone truly back-to-back -back one on a GTR, ever. They always fit it with a whole bunch of other things at the same time. So I'd never seen any supporting evidence that it really did do a, a lot of changes to the car. Secondly, is Nismo didn't make any big promises either. They said a 1.8% power increase, uh, and all of it between 4.5 and 7.5. And, and also because we've seen such good results with the factory plenum, well over 1,000 horsepower, running 8s, etc. So I was kind of always dubious of why would you bother fitting it. But it's nice to be surprised sometimes and yeah, I'm going to be honest, I'm very surprised at how well it works. In fact, it's helping make this GTR in its current setup one of the best GTRs, if not the best GTR I've ever driven. Drivability is excellent, the tune in it means it's super drivable, makes plenty of grunt, makes 600 kilowatts all day every day because obviously a 3.2 combined with a medium frame G35 turbocharger and that Nismo Collector, essentially it's just everything about drivability put together. Even though it has a big head with big cams, the video speaks for itself. The car is amazing to drive and the Collector had the results on the dyno. It works. So now the big question is, which inlet manifolds do we test next? Put it in the comments below, tell us what you think, subscribe because we've got more product tests still to come on our GTR.